everybody. So welcome to the very first annual Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase. You might be asking yourself, why is there a showcase? Well, I often get the question, which tool is right for the job, especially when I am dealing with knowledge graph and modeling questions. And what I would like to do is share with you some tools that I often point people to, some that are new on the scenes, some that are going to be a surprise. And before you ask, none of this is sponsored. I have not been paid to do any of these. I reached out to everybody on my own time. They were kind enough to meet with me and film these. So I hope that these honest reviews, all of these are my own opinions that I often help people with when they ask me questions. I hope this helps you in your search for the next knowledge graph technology that you want to dive into a little bit deeper. All of the vendors that I'm going to be talking to, I have more information and their contact information in the description below. And if I missed any tools that you wanted to see me review, or if you have questions about the ones that we are reviewing, please leave them in the comments below. I and the people that I'm talking to will be able to answer those questions for you. All right, and so what is the criteria that I'm going to be walking through? There will be a summary at the very end of each video describing the answers to each of these questions as well as a summary of any other little tidbits that we find out. So the main things that I ask are, what are the use cases that the tool is usually or best suited for? Also talking about that, what features do they have to actually support those use cases? That's pretty important in understanding if they're going to meet your needs. The other thing I like to talk about is what kind of data, what kind of format, and what kind of query language does the tool support? Two additional things I talk about, because I think they're pretty important, is first, interoperability. If a tool is not interoperable, sometimes it's a make or break moment. Other people don't mind if it's not interoperable. So we will certainly see people on both sides of the coin in these reviews. The other part is, is this SaaS or not? A lot of people that have small development teams or no development teams don't have the resources to set something up that's not SaaS. So I will be asking these questions as well as many more. So please join me in the next few episodes. So with that, let's check out this video's tool of choice, which is... All right, and with that, let's go kick it off. All right, so welcome. I'm here with Paul Appleby, and he is here with Graphify, which is a pretty cool tool that is kind of new on the market. So Paul, you want to introduce yourself? Um, hi, so yeah, I'm Paul Appleby. I'm co-founder of, of Graphify. Um, we're a startup. We've been around about um, 18 months now, um, since uh, summer last year. Um, I started it with my, my colleague, Ravinder Singh, working on, on two products. Um, one's Graphology, which we'll cover today. The other is EasyGraph, which we won't cover today, but maybe in another session. Maybe um, another one. Yeah, because I've got a subscription, it's taken me straight into my subscription. If you haven't, you get the option, obviously, to create a trial or, or a paid subscription at, at that point. Now, anybody who's registered um, with Graphology can be invited into your subscription as a user. So essentially you, you can create a, a complete team to work um, on, on your, um, your vocabularies, your ontologies, um, and the I application like is collaborative. Yeah, so um, we'll, we, we, it's a bit difficult to show with, with one person, but essentially everything um, is collaborative. All the edits are in real time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit like Google Docs for data. Like I say, there's taxonomies, but the, the, the trend seems to be what we call taxonomy plus plus. So enriched taxonomies that have much richer relationships between mm -hmm. the concepts. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where really the ontology side of things come in. Um, the goal so far in the ontology manager is to provide the features that we think are necessary for that taxonomy plus plus um, kind of work. I see. So can I ask when, and maybe you can um, open up the ontology, maybe that'll answer my question. All right, so um, it's it looks like the way that you are defined, because ontology, it's so fascinating to me that ontologies can mean, you know, taxonomies plus plus, or they can be true more like schema upper ontologies like schema.org, um, Dublin Core, uh, SCOS, those kinds of things, uh, FIBO. So this one looks like it is more on that taxonomy plus plus 
uh, version of things, things that I would on this channel have discussed in things uh, like BioPortal have vocabularies that are similar to, I think, what you are going to be showing here, which are vocabulary in nature, but are ontology class structures. So so in here, yes, so we have classes. Um, so th this is just a, a, a small um, demo ontology. Obviously, you have your class hierarchy, um, mm -hmm. you know, characters and, and subclasses. Um, I think we can see in here, you can define um, the, the class hierarchy and various bits and pieces. Um, mm -hmm. Then you've obviously got your object properties um, and they have a little, a little bit more interesting in that respect. So you can define domains, ranges, whether they're symmetric properties and inverses and, and that kind of thing. Um, and So uh, for those that are not as familiar with the ontology structure, uh, what we saw in the class structure would be the circles that you typically see in the visuals and the things that we're seeing now are those lines, those edges that connect the different classes together, the relationships essentially. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, and, and I think many of those relationships are, are bi-directional, so symmetric in nature or they're, they're inverses. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm the enemy of somebody, that person has an enemy who is me. Um, so yeah. we, we provide those. And is there, um, and maybe this is part of the um, extensions that you're going to be making to this tool as you go, uh, how would you go about adding a uh, exception to those rules at the moment there are no exceptions i mean in, inverses are you know uh they're just inverses but it's really up to the client to some degree oh i see okay so so the inferencing would go through and it would apply that uh is enemy has enemy basically um to all of the concepts that this would apply to but it would be up to the actual user your end client to um turn off one of those uh those inf inferred relationships if, if it was an exception right so if we switch over to the um the vocabulary manager here we've got a, a taxonomy project and a, a project can contain as many taxonomies and collections as you like and the collections are skulls collections ordered or unordered collections mm -hmm. um so in here we've we've loaded unesco which is a fairly common for us to, to play with and we've got a small language on as well so just if to show you a couple of examples if i um if i if i search here i'm searching across all of the concepts in the, in the project so i can mm -hmm. see i've got french in, in both of those mm -hmm. and i'll just go into unesco so uh, UNESCO is a fairly big um, taxonomy, quite a lot of top level concepts. Um, so this is essentially what you see um, in, in graphology and it handles multiple languages at the project level. So you can define at the project level which of the languages you want to see. And essentially on the right, so you've got your, your traditional tree on the left. Uh, and on the right, you've got all essentially the skulls properties. So let's say you want to say cotillion is a related concept. Is it going to, is it using related concept as a relation between those two things so how does that how does that work yeah so these is these are the standard skulls properties essentially so related concept there is is what is called skulls related so absolutely designed to um, connect concepts in generally in the same taxonomy um there are another set of properties slightly below this which um are generally used to connect um concepts in different taxonomies so for instance if i add um, obviously, we saw French in language. If I could say that French here, if I type French, I'll see that these are other things. So I'm going to say that, okay, so French in UNESCO taxonomy is obviously related somehow to French in the language taxonomy. Mm -hmm. um, now, Scott doesn't really go any more specific than that. And, and that's why the ontology comes into play, is yeah. to say, well, well, actually, give me some more information about that, that relationship. Scott's Excel allows you to say information about the label itself, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is really quite useful in, in some use cases. Um, you yeah. know, it might be when it was created, what's the origin of that label? Um, exactly. So it, it gives you a much, much m m richer experience or, or, or richer environment adding information. And we can also add the ontology properties to skull set, um, labels as well. So you had in the ontology a few different types of relations. How would you connect let's say cotillion to French using any of those ontological relations in this application. Let me um, let me switch to the other project because it's okay. it's been set up to show that. So okay. here we have our small fantasy world project with a few taxonomies. 
some superheroes mm -hmm. and villains, psychics, locations, your, your typical kind of things that you need for a, for a fantasy world. Um, mm -hmm. Now we want to make use of the ontology, our fantasy world model um, here. So what we can do at the project level over here, we can associate um, ontology projects with taxonomy projects, and you can associate multiple ontologies with a, um, a taxonomy project. So nice. what, we've, what we've done is say, right, we want to make use of, of the fantasy model demo, um, and we want to make use of certain classes and properties, because obviously they're making it quite large. You don't just want to have everything potentially available. So you, you limit the classes and the properties that you want to use on this project. So mm -hmm. what you can see here, we've, we've added four classes and, um, and seven properties. So if we then go into, um, let's go into the superheroes. And if we choose um, Batman, um, we can see that we've added the superhero class to Batman. Mm -hmm. um, so he's not just a concept, he's mm -hmm. also a superhero. And mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would deny that. Um, now, if we scroll down, we go past obviously the standard Scars relations. And at the bottom, this is where we start to see the, the really interesting stuff. Oh, very nice. I like this. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, the properties from the ontology are in here and we've um, started to connect it to things in other taxonomies or, or obviously within this taxonomy so we can see here that um, batman has an enemy of the joker um mm -hmm. has sidekick alfred of course um mm -hmm. he's known to superman and he lives in gotham um mm -hmm. so all of those things are in the other taxonomies in this project and you can connect anything together that's within the project um and those properties are the main and range um aware so mm -hmm. when you go to has enemy has enemy has been defined as um a range of villains so only things that are villains will become mm -hmm. available to put into that field and similarly oh, so it's doing some of that validation for you okay yes yeah. so it, let's just add one just to show you how it works so we've got superman who's also been classed as a superhero so um so he lives in so we just go like that and i think we'll drop this Right, so nothing's coming up at the moment, as we can see. Um, we've tried Metropolis. He lives in Metropolis. If we go to um, our locations, look at Metropolis, we can see we it's uh, it doesn't have an additional class. That's why it didn't come up because of the range. So if we add that Metropolis is a location, mm -hmm. um, and then we go back to our superheroes and back to Superman, if we now try to add Metropolis, Thumbs up. Okay. Um, so you can see that's that's showing mm -hmm. how how you can add a relationship and how it's aware of the classes of things that you're trying to associate. Now the interesting thing on Superman is we have the a data type property, so to speak, mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. first appearance. So those work in the in the same way. Obviously, you're not making relationships with the concepts, but you can do things um uh, like obviously when we first appeared, can he fly? You could have a, a can of we've got a can fly property. Um in fact we can if we show that, let's um, let's add can fly. So as you're adding that in, uh, with the date field, is there any validation on the format of the date, or is that something that you'd have to do on your own yeah, at this that, point? That's done. That's actually done from the date picker. So we actually go into the uh, um, into here and we'll add them. Mm -hmm. Add a property. And fly. We'll say that the range of this property is uh, boolean. Either you can fly or you can't fly. That's mm -hmm. that's fairly, fairly clear. And the domain is because it's going to apply to villains or superheroes and it, mm -hmm. the, and the, the class hierarchy. As we saw mm -hmm. before, villains and superheroes are both subclasses of, of superheroes. So um, if we then go back to our vocabulary project and add can fly now. Uh, that's now made that new ontology property available mm -hmm. to Superman. Hopefully we can see can fly. Oh, and okay, I can see it. Yeah. And if we click on there, can he fly? Yes, of course he can fly. And there we go. So nice. Yeah, I mean, th this is uh, very sophisticated. One thing I did want to ask, because it is a very common problem with interfaces like this, and that is, ontologies and vocabularies and knowledge graph kind of data can be very big, very large data sets. Um, and sometimes there's not a lot of hierarchy. So 
based on what you have already um, tested out in your tool, like what would you say is probably the maximum that you've tested um, that can still be rendered in this tool right now? Um, no, it's a good point. And um, we've tried various different shapes of data, um, mm -hmm. I think is the right word. Um, mm -hmm. Now, our goal isn't necessarily now at the moment to support huge ontologies. Uh, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. But we have tested it with Agrivoc, um, okay. and Agrivoc is 37,000 or so concepts, and three okay. quarters of a million um, labels. So Agrivoc's pretty pretty big um, mm -hmm. in, in terms of, of size. Um, mm -hmm. Now, it is fairly hierarchical. I think it goes 14 yeah. levels deep. So that yeah. the issue there is, is not so much um, a flat list, it's how on earth do you, do you sensibly display 14 levels deep? Um, yes. No, you, you can't You can't see it here, but essentially we do show a tree of where you are because it's easy to get lost. So yeah. that's one extreme. Um, mm -hmm. At the other end, yes, you get some very flat lists. Now, we've tested um, the ontology manager up to about 2,000 concepts Okay. Um, at, at the top, at the top level, um, mm -hmm. which case covers use cases, I think, like DBpedia. Um, yeah. uh, and similar kind of levels on um on the taxonomy manager so okay. uh, so above that yeah you're, you're, yeah you're going to start to, it's going you're obviously going to see a, a slight slowdown that the more and more you get yeah. um here on the is, is the quality checks um so we have certain setup and mm. you can see here unesco fails on 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 one of the most basic ones here the same. I definitely want to talk about um, the other part of your tool, maybe on another call, because that one sounds interesting as well. Is there any way you can just show us as a sneak peek? This is essentially takes a, a model and automatically builds you APIs. And mm. in our experience in the past, just building that basic plumbing has, has always been something of a big task. When really, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to focus on adding value from your knowledge in the graph, not building the, the plumbing itself. So a bit like a commodity machine learning service to some degree, you know, what, why not use them? They're there. Um, here, we, you supply this um, um, an ontology, um, and uh, that can obviously come from graphology, um, and we have some kind of CAN setups. And that takes that model and essentially goes through and, and defines um, an HTTP or, and GraphQL APIs. So again, one of the things we've certainly found is that uh, you throw OWL, at a developer of a front-end application, they will throw their hands up and go, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, Gra Graph GraphQL is a, is a much more developer-friendly um, yes. sort of uh, query language, but we see Easy Graph essentially as, as a kind of delivery mechanism. So it may suck in data from graphology. It may so also suck in data from other systems within the company. And essentially mm -hmm. it, 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 it can act as, as, as a, a, an integration point to then deliver that data out. But um, in, in here, we have a full playground um, where you can go in and again, you can try everything out. So once you've set up your API, all of this is done for you and mm. you can create these requests. Um, and so you can easily go in um, and try out your API. So all of that kind of just is, is done automatically for you. And again, the, the idea is to, to help teams who maybe aren't semantic experts to make yeah. use of knowledge graphs yeah. and to build um, to build applications and proof of concepts to show business value quickly um, yeah. rather than having to think about getting in specialist teams and the skills are still quite specialist yeah. Um, yeah. at the semantic yeah. level. So bypass yeah. that and, and get to building interesting stuff on top of your graph and, and don't yeah, worry about the learning I, I, I love that. Well, this is, is very welcome. So yeah, uh, we, we will save the rest of this one for another video, but thank you for giving us a little sneak peek. All right, Paul, thank you so much for walking us through that. That is a pretty cool tool. I'm very excited that we got to see something that's new to the market, especially with as much flexibility as you folks are offering up. So if anybody wants to find out more about uh, what you guys are all doing, or if they want to reach out to you with more questions, how would they get a hold of you? Um, so if you want to see graphology, we have a small dedicated site called graphology.com. Um, mm -hmm. If you want more information about EasyGraph, then graphify.com. And from there, you can get contact details. All right, great. And I will put all of that in the description below. And Paul, I want to thank you very much. 